Mr. Klein here and the topic of this video today are interactive science notebooks. If you were in class you've heard this already so this is a review but if you weren't in class consider this an introduction or an orientation as to what interactive science notebooks are. So let's go ahead and get started. What you'll need is obviously the interactive science notebook I gave you in class uh, along with the worksheets and pages I gave you and then also things like for example color pencils, pair of scissors, uh, also you know a glue stick and a pencil. So you'll need these materials in order to use your science notebook effectively in addition to whatever it is I give you. So let's go ahead and let's look at this. Well on the cover we have the interactive science notebook. It says my science notebook. It has your name has the school's logo right here and I personalized it. I drew a picture of it of I guess this person who loves science as he has on his apron. He's real safe. He's wearing his safety goggles and I encourage you to go ahead and draw uh, on your notebook cover and personalize it uh, and you go ahead and use paste and you paste it to the cover. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open it up and we're gonna look right here and if you're wondering uh, how I grade these science notebook rubrics, uh, I, rather I'm going to use this rubric and if you notice that it looks the same as our rubric for social studies, of course it does. Uh, same things, need some work, could be better, good, great, awesome. And it has the descriptions of them. Now, we want at minimum, we want to be good or better, but in case of the science notebook really we want to be awesome. We want to have a complete table of contents and all entries in the correct order. We want to have all assignments, notes, labs, other activities all together, all student reflections, and then at the end of the week whenever it's time for the test and I ask you to write your reflection, I want you to do deep and insightful thinking about the prompt. If I ask you to write about what we learned this week, I want you to think about not just what we learned but how it connects to science and more things like that. So let's go ahead and let's look at this. Well we have a table of contents if you saw right there and let's look at page one which is right here, a table of contents. You've pasted this in and we know it's on page one because already in class you've numbered these starting with page one going all the way up to a certain distance which I told you in class and then as we get there we go there. So page two has observations and inferences. Uh, so let's go ahead and look there and we'll flip the page and we'll see what the main thing is for the interactive science notebook. Now we have two sides. We have a right side and we have a left side. The right side is input. I'm going to write this down. You don't have to. This is from the teacher. So these are guided notes that we uh, will have taken on observations and inferences and what you did was you cut out the paper and you pasted it in here and as we went over it in class or whenever you watch the videos uh, you write down these terms and all this information right here and this is the information that you're going to use over here on the other side which is the output and the output is what the student does. And I'm writing this right now. And what the student does is whether it's a worksheet or a graphic organizer or a lab or anything like that, uh, what you do is you do the work and you make your connections and you write notes in ways that you can understand to help you study. And what will happen is we'll have things like foldables. So here's observations and inferences. And whenever we open this up, we're talking about the same thing that's over here. So you take the information from here and you make it in a way that you can understand. So here's our foldable about the characteristics of observations uh, and inferences. So we have our characterizations here, one, two, three. Characteristics of inferences here, one, two, three. And then I have you do usually do some sort of drawing or some visualization or model drawing or something like that in order for you to understand what the concept is. So no matter whether we're doing a lab, a worksheet, guided notes, uh, videos for the evening where you write and you make a connection, you bring it to class, you'll be doing this. Usually from the lesson we'll have three to four pages uh, of notes and activities on both sides. So in other words you'll have this maybe the night before you 
uh, come to class, you'll watch the video, you'll take the notes, and then you'll have some sort of activity you need to complete. And then the next day, we'll come in and we'll talk about this stuff after the quiz. Then ever, I'll give you an activity right here, and then you write out the information. This might be a lab with your lab instructions. And then the, right here, you would put the notes in your drawings for that. So what will happen is we'll go through pages. You know, we'll go in, out, in, out, in, out, and we'll go all the way through till the notebook is full. Now, one last thing before we go is here at the end. At the end, you have a glossary. I had you cut out these pages and paste them. They're on the last four pages, and whenever we run out of pages in this, our science notebook, we'll go ahead and we'll create a new one with this. But the glossary are all the terms you've learned so far in class. And so all these vocabulary words that we talked about and uh, in the videos and things like that go on here. So if you notice, I already have inference. And then right here, I have observation, qualitative and quantitative observation. This is from our lesson. So what I want you to do is I want you to take the vocabulary word, underline it, and then use the vocabulary definition that we discussed in class. You don't have to use the one in our textbook. Rather, I would rather you use the ones that we come up with as a class, because that's the definitions that we use in order to understand. Uh, so it goes through all the way through. And back here, as more and more activities come on, what we'll do is we'll put in another handout similar to this that describes the type of activities and what you need to do for them. But right now, we're just taking notes and doing foldables and things like that. But as the year goes on, we'll add stuff. And you're going to paste this back here. Now, what you should do is you should bring this to class every day every day, which you should also bring it to class every day. It's notebook, it's also your color pencil. In the class, we'll uh, have scissors and a glue stick, and you should always bring a pencil, okay? Because without that, you won't be able to take notes and things like that. Now, you might be asking yourself, but Mr. Klein, what if I'm not here? Well, what you do is you make sure you have your science notebook with you at your house. You shouldn't forget it at school. And you can always download the handouts and things like that from class from, uh, from my teacher website, which then you could print out, cut out, glue, and using the videos, understand what went on uh, without skipping a beat. So there you go, this science notebook. It's an introduction to what we'll be doing. And of course, they will be graded. And to remind you how we'll be graded, we look at this rubric. We don't want to need some work or could be better. Good is barely acceptable. What we really want is great or awesome. And awesome is where we want to be at. Because after all, we want to be awesome science students. So there you go. That's the summary on science notebooks. If you have any other questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching.